Hi friends, Amanda here from Faithfully Homemade. Today I'm going to show you some measurement activities that are for kindergarten or first grade students. So students ages from four to six, these would be great for. These come from unit eight of my early learners math curriculum. So if you have unit eight, uh, you're going to get to see how to use these activities with your students. And if you don't, um, some of these activities may be of interest to you. You do not have to uh, purchase the full curriculum. You could actually purchase these activities separately. And I'll leave links below to everything. But let's get into the video and let's see. The first activity here I have is um, a zoo measurement activity. So it comes with these cards here. And then it also has a zoo mat right here. And what you're going to need with this activity is just something to mark your answers. So right here I have these snap cubes and I'm going to just use these to mark the answers because um, we're going to use these snap cubes in some of the other activities later on. And so since I have them out, we can just use these. But any kind of manipulative will work. And what the student is going to do is they are going to grab a card. So here I have a card and we're going to look at the animals, the zoo animals on this card. And this card says mark the one that is longer. So they're going to put their card right there in the zoo. They're going to look at the two animals. They're going to count and they're going to mark the one that is longer. So my snake is longer. So um, to mark it, I'm going to use my manipulative here. So my little snap cubes and I'm going to mark the one that is longer. If I am correct, I'm going to go on. So I will grab another card. Now some of the cards are marking what length and then some of them are marking height. So this one says mark the one that is taller. So they're going to look at the two animals on this card. They're going to count their squares and they see that the bear is taller. So they're going to go ahead and mark him with one of their manipulatives. You could also, since these cards are um, laminated, I could go ahead and have the students mark them by circling. So let's look at another card here. This one is mark the one that is shorter. So I'm going to take my dry erase marker and I'm just going to circle the one that is shorter on this card. So either way, you could have them use a, uh, um, a dry erase marker or you could have them use a manipulative to mark their answers. This next activity is called grocery store measurement. This activity is sort of like an activity I had in my Valentine um, activity centers, if you saw that one. Um, so it's a little similar to it. However, this one is um, grocery store. So what they're gonna do is the kids are gonna get a ruler that looks like this. This one has um, grocery carts on it, as you can see. And they're gonna use that ruler to measure the grocery store items. So here I have things like a carrot and some blueberries and some broccoli, crackers, uh, you see a pepper, I even have a teeny tiny apple, and some bananas. Okay, so you can see the just the different items here that I have, grocery store items. So they're going to go ahead and choose an item. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this blueberry. Let me move this out of the way. These blueberries, because I love blueberries. My kids love blueberries too. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna line up their little ruler here, and they're gonna count how tall, how many grocery carts tall is the blue, are the blueberries. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five. Remember to tell the students that they need to line up their um, measurement tool to with the bottom of their object, because obviously if they're trying to measure like this, it's not gonna work. So that's one of the biggest uh, things that kids mess up or, or when they're measuring is that they do not line up their tool properly and make sure it's flush with the bottom. So anyways, um, Let's see, so one, two, three, four, five, that one was five. So then what they're going to do is they're going to look at their mat. Now I have laminated this mat. You could also just put the mat into a um, plastic sleeve and it will work just as well as far as dry erase goes if you want this activity to last. Um, if you just wanna do it one time, then you don't even have to laminate it. And also all of these activities come in black and white. So if you don't have a color printer, you could still always print them in black and white and that's no big deal. Okay, so anyways, mine is laminated. So I'm going to take an, an Expo marker. And again, I, when after I counted this, one, two, three, four, five, I couldn't remember what I had said. Okay, I counted it, it was five. So then I'm gonna find the blueberries on my mat. They're right here. And then on, um, if you can see on the mat, there are little grocery bags. On the grocery bags that, grocery bag that is by the blueberries, I'm gonna write a five. 
with my dry erase marker. And then I can go again and I can pick a different uh, item. So here are my, is my carrot. And my carrot is three, so then I'm gonna go ahead and write a three next to the carrots and so on. So that is how this activity works. They're gonna continue on until they have written the measurements for all of the items at the grocery store. This next activity is a sorting activity with flowers. So there are different sets of flowers and what you need to do is give the kiddos one set. So all the flowers need to look the same in the set. Here are three sets here and I have just a whole slew of them. It comes with um, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight or nine sets of flowers. So I'm just going to take one set for now and what the kids are gonna do is they just have to sort them from smallest to biggest. So they could do that just like this on a table. Um, obviously you wanna have them mixed up and then they're gonna sort them from sh um, shortest, excuse me, to tallest. So actually this one goes here. Okay, so from shortest to tallest. You could do it on a table. They can also do it on a pocket chart. So here I have just a pocket chart. You could have them stand up at the board with a pocket chart and sort them into their pocket chart from shortest to tallest. So here I have my set of flowers from shortest to tallest, and you're gonna do the same thing with all the different sets of flowers. So here I have another set. Obviously they would sort these ones from shortest to tallest. This activity is called find and measure. So you're going to have these different cards here, and the child is going to take a card and it's going to tell them what to find. So this card says find a glue stick and measure it. And they have to measure with snap cubes on this activity. So here are my snap cubes. And um, I'm going to find a glue stick. So here's my glue stick. And I'm going to go ahead and measure it with some snap cubes here. I think, yeah. So this one is four snap cubes long. And then what I would have the students do is take a dry erase marker and write a number four on their card. As long as the card is um, dry or laminated, then they can erase it later on. Okay, so then the next, uh, let's see, card I have here is find a crayon. So then obviously they would go ahead, find a crayon and measure it with snap cubes. Um, some of the other examples I have are find a marker, find a book, whoops. Find a pencil, find scissors. Here's an example of finding some scissors and measuring them. Measure a flash card, measure a tissue box, and so on. Okay, this activity is called I Can Lift It, I Can't Lift It. So now we're going to talk about measuring weight. So some of these activities measure length and height. Um, so some of them are linear measurements and then some of them are weight measurements. So this one is a weight measurement and uh, activity. And so they're going to spin the spinner and let's see what it lands on. It is going to land on, I can't lift it. So they're gonna look on their mat and they're going to cover up an object that they cannot lift. I cannot lift a school bus, so I'm going to use any kind of manipulative I have to cover up my um, school bus. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you. When um, I was showing you the zoo activity uh, center, instead of using these snap cubes, I meant to show you uh, how to use these little, I have um, these little toy animals, and I thought that they would be a lot of fun to use with that activity when you're covering up on the zoo activity. So if you have little, um, these little animals are puppets, but if you have any kind of little toy that are little animals, those would be a really fun um, idea to use to uh, for, for the zoo activity, for them marking their answers. So I meant to show you that, but I didn't. Okay, anyways. so. Um, okay, I covered that one up. So then they're just gonna keep on spinning until they've covered everything on their mat. So now it landed on I can lift it. So I'm gonna take a manipulative and I'm gonna cover up something on my mat that I can lift. I can lift a pencil, so I'm gonna cover that up. And they're just gonna keep on going. And that way they are uh, using their um, thinking skills to figure out if something is heavy or if something is light. This activity is another one where students are going to be deciding um, weight measurements. And so they have to uh, decide, they're gonna take a card like this, there's a bunch of them here. They're gonna take one 
and they're going to look at what it says. This one says cover the heaviest object. So here I have a church, a balloon, or a popsicle. Obviously the church is the heaviest. So I'm gonna take a manipulative and go ahead and cover up the heaviest. This says cover the lightest object. Well, the lightest object down here would be a frog because it's definitely lighter than a car or a rhinoceros. This one says cover the lightest. I'm gonna cover up the lollipop. Okay, so you get the idea. They're just gonna continue on until they have done all the different cards and they have decided which ones are heavy and which ones are light. All right, this activity is getting kids um, to use their ruler and learn about inches. So what you would do is you would introduce the ruler. Mine is really dirty because my kids have had this for years and so it's been written on, but you get the idea. You're gonna introduce the ruler. You're gonna talk about how these big numbers on here are called inches. You're gonna talk about how when we measure, we line up our object right to the end of the ruler and then we look to see how close it is to one of these big numbers, these inches. So anyways, this activity is a clothing sort. So here I have um, a, a sorting header that says shorter than six inches. And then this one says longer than six inches. So you would lay out your sorting headers. And then um, what you would do is the kids, there's a, there's a whole bunch of cards that look like this where the kids are gonna measure. They're either gonna measure the height or the width of these um, clothing objects. And then they have to put them under the correct uh, header. So the, the correct line of clothing. All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and pick this shirt here. And I see that there's a red line here, so I'm going to measure the height of this shirt. And so I look at my ruler, and of course you're going to want to have the kids line it up right at the bottom, and I see that this shirt is exactly five inches. Now, um, all of the clothing measurements should be exact. I tried to make the um, size of the objects exact so that um, young kids aren't going to have too much trouble with, you know, oh, is it four and a half or is it five and a half or whatever. It, it, they should be exact to the inches um, for these young kids. But anyway, so this one was five, so it's shorter than six inches, so the kids are going to put it in this pile here. Then they would just grab another object and they would go ahead and measure it. So I'm going to go ahead and measure up this um jacket here this jacket is six it's exactly six so it's going to go in the middle because it's not shorter and it's not longer so we're also so we're not only teaching children um, how to measure but then they're also learning sorting skills which sorting is a great skill for math so they're going to learn that ah this one goes in the middle because it's not shorter it's not longer and then um anyways they can pick another one i'm going to measure this hat and let's see so you want to make sure you have the kiddos just line it right up to the end here this hat is three inches wide and so it is shorter than six inches so it's going to go in this pile over here with this guy so anyways they're just going to continue on measuring all of the different clothing objects here and just having a whole lot of fun Okay, this is the very last activity center, and this one is called Flip and Compare Weight. So if you have a, um, a mat like that looks like this, and then you're gonna have cards. Here I have my cards, and I'm gonna put them in two different piles. So I'm gonna put my cards up here, and you want, just want the cards mixed up, and then what you're gonna have the kids do is they're gonna flip over two cards. So I'm gonna flip over one, and I'm gonna flip over this one. And then they're gonna compare, and they're gonna look at them and they're gonna put the heavier object on the scale here and they're gonna put the lighter object on the scale here. And then they're gonna flip over again. And again, I'm gonna put my heavier object here and my lighter object here. And you can talk about scales, how um, the lighter object will go up as the weight of the heavier object would bring the scale down. If you have a, a real scale uh, in your classroom or in your home, wherever you're working, uh, you can obviously use that to show the children um, how it will go up or it will go down based on if they're heavier or lighter. Now, if um, I'm gonna flip over two more here. Here I have heavier, object and lighter object. If by chance they flip over two cards, let's say I flip over these two cards, and they're both very light objects and so neither one will go on, I would just put those two off to the side and have them flip again. This one I have a desk and I have glasses, so obviously desk is heavier, glasses is lighter. 
So, um, that is it guys. That's the last activity center. If you have questions or comments, uh, leave them below. I'm going to leave links to these activities below as well. These, uh, like I said, are from unit eight of my early learners math curriculum. You can, um, get these uh, activity centers separately or you can get them in the entire curriculum bundle and i have had some great feedback from my curriculum i am almost finished with it i just have um like two units to go i believe and i will be finished and then i am going to be rolling out some phonics curriculum and it's going to be a lot of fun so thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time bye